Hello, and welcome to Elaine A. Powers' Reptile Side Chat. Today, I'd like to talk to you about one of the other of the major iguana groups that you might find in the pet trade, and that's the spiny tail lizard. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a spiny tail lizard alive to share with you today, but I will tell you about a very special one that I had in my life. Now, Tina, uh, the kind of spiny tail that is common in the pet trade is the Tinosaurus similis, or the a black and white spiny tail, also called a uh, black iguana. And they are called spiny tails because their tails, the um, scales on their tails have little keels, have little ridges, so that the uh, tail is rough when you touch it. Now the Tinosaura refers to the spines on the back of it. They're very short and very stiff and kind of look like a comb. So um, it, they're kind of the cone spine lizards uh, with their little spiny tails. Now, Tinosaurus are found in Mexico and Central America and the Similis isn't endangered, but many of his cousins are. And one of the species that I've worked with is the Tinosaura bakeri that's found on the island of Utila in the Bay Islands off the coast of Honduras. And um, I was honored to be able to help them out. Well, I am waiting for my little baby uh, spiny tail to grow up so that I can use him for talks uh, and he was um, selected to replace a very special one in my life who was named Crinkle. Now I got Crinkle from a rescue in New Jersey and they called me and they said well we have something that they're calling a black iguana do you want one and I said I'm getting in the car now I'm on my way now, Crinkle was a very special iguana for two reasons. One, he was an example of man's inhumanity to reptiles. And he also was the best iguana I had for doing talks uh, to schools in different places because he never, ever showed any aggression. Now, I don't know if you can see in this picture, but he actually has some pretty amazing teeth. Uh, Spiny tails are omnivores, so that they, they do eat plant and animal matter. But in every talk I gave, and I used him in every talk, uh, whether it was screaming little kids or adults, and he never would open his mouth, because I, I wanted people to see the impressive teeth of an iguana, but he would never open his mouth. That, that was too much of a, a sign of aggression, and he wouldn't do it. And he would lock his legs, um, so that he could be passed from child to child to child uh, and stay stiff so it was easier for them to handle. And he just loved being out among the kids, even if they were screaming and, and yelling. Now the sad thing about Crinkle and how he got his name was that he was kept in a five-gallon aquarium for the first five years of his life. And um, he, they, people have been told that if you keep him in a small container, the iguana will stay small. Well, they'll stay small because they'll die um, at an early age. Well, what Crinkle did is he sacrificed the back half of his body. So he was full-sized from his chest up, you know, and he had nice, good shoulders, but he had very little hips, and his tail was accordioned. So even though he had the normal um, foot-and-a-half-long tail, it was all... Um, shrunk up like an accordion. It had been folded up. Um, I'm pleased to say over the years it was able to stretch out, but it was still pretty much an, an ongoing S and um, curved tail, um, which was very sad. And um, he had sacrificed his hips, so he had to learn how to walk again. And with good nutrition and exercise, he was able to walk. He was never able to run, though. 
So he would run and he would fall over. Um, but he didn't mind. He, he was a good sport about it. So, um, so unfortunately, Crinkle eventually died of old age. Um, I'm sure his lifespan was shortened because of the metabolic bone disease and the stress on his body uh, from the very poor care that he got for the first five years of his life. But the remainder of his life, I had him probably 15 years, was great. And um, he was a special iguana. So someday I'm hoping to have um, another spiny tail that I can use for talks. Um, unfortunately, like the green iguana, the spiny tail, Tinosaurus similis, has become an invasive as well. Uh, they're very popular in the pet trade, and unfortunately they've been released in warmer states like Florida and Texas, and are now uh, free, for, free roaming feral populations, and have become invasive because they can be a little aggressive and they do eat anything that they feel like it. Um, they're very good at digging into the insulation of houses, which makes them kind of unwelcome. They will drive out um, other more mild-mannered lizards and animals. So sadly, um, in my work in creating pamphlets on how to recognize a native iguana versus an invasive, um, I've had to start including the Tinosaurus similis as well. So these, um, the, the similis, like Crinkle here, are the largest of the spiny tails. They reach about um, three feet, a, a yard long, a, a meter long. Half of it is torso, half of it is tail. And when they get mature, their, their tail is rather spiky and painful to hold on to. Um, but uh, they, they can be wonderful companion animals uh, for responsible reptile owners. And uh, so that's the third of the kind of iguanas that you might see normally in the pet trade. You know, I've talked about the rock iguanas like blue and uh, the green iguanas, of course, which are the, the most populous in the pet trays. And now the spiny tails. And uh, so that that's all for today. And hopefully someday I can share more, uh, another spiny tail with you. And uh, this is Elaine A. Powers signing off for this reptile side chat. Check out my websites, elaineapowers.com and lyricpower.net. And I hope to see you at a future reptile side chat. Bye. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and share and subscribe. Every time you comment or share one of my videos, it helps me make more videos. And the more videos I make, the more people we reach.